Welcome everyone. I'm super excited to bring you guys another Dota Underlord tournament. This time it is the ESL Mobile Opens presented by AT&T in North America. The ESL Mobile Opens is looking into auto battle games and they're expanding into Dota Underlord Mobile. This is a great way to support the Dota Underlord community and I'm so happy it's going to bring Underlords and its esports to the next level. This North America ESL Dota Underlord tournament has no rank requirements and it has over $20,000 prize pool for the top 32 players. The Underlord tournament will be divided into three different phases. Players will be allocated into different groups with matches to be played on Thursday, Saturday and Sunday of each of the weeks. Players will earn points for their placement in each of the games and top 4 players from each group will advance to the next round. The finals of this tournament will be hosted live at ESL1 Los Angeles at the Shine Auditorium. The ESL Mobile Opens is not only about promoting for potential mobile esports, but also giving people a chance to compete. You don't have to be an established pro or top player to participate in the tournament. The theme of the program is that everybody can be somebody and creating opportunities for aspiring players. So how do we register for this tournament? Links for the tournament registration will be provided in the description below. So make sure you guys click on the link, register for the tournament, check in for each of the open and close playoffs for the tournament. As one of the caster for this tournament, I wish you guys all the best of luck. Welcome guys. Today we have a Dota Underlord guide for the tier list for the items and alliance. Here we have a tier list maker, which is not updated for the latest alliance. So I have a few here that's showing and we're going back to the game for the other few that's not showing like the brutes, like the insects, etc. So first off, I did categorize them in majority in top three category. So S and A and B. So currently, I feel that if you want to rank up in normal games or casual games or rank games, that's not knockout. The Scrappies, Knights and Druids tend to be most consistent, followed by the Brutes. We can't see the Brutes here because it doesn't have an icon. So those top four are consistent for two things. One is that units want to be rolling at level 8 for those builds. You can be rolling at level 7 for the Druids. You can be rolling at level 7 for the Brutes. And level 8 for the Scrappy and Knights are perfectly fine. Other builds tend to want higher rates or different situations. And those top four give you the chance of keeping your underlord alive for much longer because if they are alive they cast more spells and make your team stronger depending on what underlord you choose as well scrappies let's go to them there's a variety of options with scrappy with waiver becoming a scrappy and a hunter you can go with scrappy hunter bounty hunter for the scrappy assassin alchemist for the scrappy warlock and dead eye for the scrappies and you know gyrocopter and also inventors this way after that, you can also play with the Scrappy Insects and Hunters with Waver. So Scrappy is so versatile. You can also go with 6 Scrappies. Although you don't have Techies, which is a big downfall for the Ace of Inventors, it's still okay. Scrappy is very top meta right now. Followed by Knights. Knights also have inbuilt humans in it with only Knight and, you know, with the Dragon Knight. On top of that, the Dragons are decent and the Knights, although they lost Luna, the power spike with Sven 2 star and some items and the solid durability with them, it's very good. And the availability of going for the Heartless Knights with Necromancer, followed by the Healers with the Only Knight and the Dazzle is really good. You can go into Troll Knights, Dragon Knights, and sometimes I've seen people run 4 Human Knights with the Keep of the Light too. <laughs> it's a strange one, but it might work, but I tend to favor Knights with a healing team. So with Scrappies, you can pick almost any Underlord. The tanky ones or the damage ones? Usually I prefer the damage ones because Scrappies are very tanky. For the Knights, I tend to pick Anasix for the healing. Or I can go with Hogan for the damage. Or I can go with a Support Druid for the more sustain and damage. Next up, we have the early game with Druids and also Brutes. We can't see the Brutes here. I'll just, I'll just do that for the Brutes. <laughs> You're like, why he's got pretty damage? We know the Brutes are here. I just can't get them there. So... The Druids. The Druids are great because Shadow Shaman is now a Druid and also a Troll. So the Troll as a branch into the Druids give us Batrider or the Witch Doctor, which are powerhouse in the early game. And, you know, Druids are always good. On top of that, the something we're missing is that the Druids works well with the Legion Commander. So if happens you find a 2-star Legion, you build into the 2 or 4 Druids, you can see a massive power spike if you also add the Demons for the Legion Commander and the Druids. 
and the druids going to go into brutes with stream protector druids go into the more trolls four trolls with you know can go to four trolls with dazzle and troll wallet and also add the hitters too all the druids take alternative path and go into the six savages six savages with a change now give you 20 attack per cast for damage and also per attack well, I've ran 600 700 damage bristle back and the long druid with a six savage team, but only two druids. I think warriors are better than druids, and hunters are better late game if you run the six savages. We'll touch on that, but the druids are decent. Lastly, with the brutes, Doom's a really good demon, and Ogre is a very solid unit in the mid game. Axe is a very strong two, two star unit once you get him to two star. Followed by that, you can run the brutes heartless with the the Brutes, you can run the 4 Heartless Dead Eye for the late game with Zerocopter. You can even run the Brutes Hunters because you can work with Beastmaster with the Axe too for the additional health. So Brutes are powerhouse in the early game because most units don't do that much damage and they melee attack reduce enemy damage. You usually overwhelm the enemy with more units and you can consider getting a Long Druid or something to boost for damage. So those are the top fuse. On the second tier, we won't touch too much, but I'll touch on the key parts to make them work. Majors need to be 6. 2 is not enough. Having a Kai on one of the key majors, like Storm, like the Keeper, like the Morphling, is massive. Keep in mind, you don't need the 3-star units for the mage. Storm is not a game changer. It is the Morphling that's a game changer. Find the 3-star Morphling, and if you've seen our videos, he will wreak havoc. He gets 3 times the attack damage and 4 second cooldown. 450 AoE damage is massive with mage buff. He was hitting for like close to 900 a pop and he flies every 4 seconds. With hunters, you do want 3 hunters if you plan for the later game hunter with Medusa or 6 hunters with insects if available. Only 2 insects is enough. Usually you go warriors for the front line. Assassins, you do want to go 6 assassins and insects but you also want to add the dragons with Dragonite because you can't go 3 insects anymore. You have to go 4 or 2. So 2 is enough, I'll go for 4, or you add a Dragonite. The Trolls is a branch, and the Warriors, I don't recommend 6 Warriors. 3 is enough. 6 Warriors is only if you get a good set of Warriors and a support team to go with it. Usually it will be Warlocks, Savages, something basic like the Scales with Venomancer. And then you build the Troll out for the Master Manners. It's a little weaker because the Brutes counter you, Scrappy counter you, and Knights can counter you, or you can counter the Knights. <laughs> it's back to back. I've seen many people run for 6 Warlocks. It feels great when you can heal up, especially with a Disruptor. It's not that great if the enemy bursts you down, especially Assassins. So it's not that stable for the top tier, but it's pretty decent. And on the next part, those are more branches. Those branches are not going to be a majority build unless you can fully build the you can build the brownies, you can build the savages with a transition. You can't force them right away unless you get so many of them you just have nothing to do with it. Six Heartless to highlight is okay, but ideally they're just too wide. There's a knight heartless, there's a brute, there's you know a warrior, it's just too wide and too many, too many melee units. So only go for two or four is enough usually. Coming back to the game, we can see that we don't have the spirits there. We talk about the brutes, we didn't have the champion there, and the insects was not there as well. So a few things to the highlight. The spirits are great for the early game because usually early game one star spirits survives to cast the triangle. Okay for the mid game because people still position themselves in the middle. Not great in the late game unless you get Void Spirit. He's just so good. He's like a free alchemist or even stronger. So, unless you have Void Spirit, Earth Spirit, Storm Spirit, and Decent, Imper Spirit dies too fast at 2 star because he will blink to the back, people just kills him, and you don't have the triangle. Insects. Usually, you go for Sand King and Brute Mother as a free add on if you. Build. If your build needs the next Nyx Assassin for the Assassins, you just add 1 or 2. You try to not go for 4, but it can work. I've seen it work before. For the Scrappies, Waver plus 1 is pretty good. And lastly, the Alliance here, there's not much to look at except keeping in mind Demons. I have to test them out, especially turning Legion into a Demon. Having a Chaos Knight on the team actually stops Legion casting fast enough because the animation with Legion and Chaos Knight interacts that Chaos Knight always casts first 
when both have full mana and full CD. If that's the case, I have two Chaos Knight and one Legion. Chaos Knight, the two Chaos Knight never stop casting. The Legion cannot cast at all. So keep in mind, if you run a champion build with any of the demons, try to only go for one demon. Two is the maximum, but don't go for two Chaos Knight. Otherwise, she never cast. Oh, like, very unlikely. Legion can work very well. There's a few builds. There's a Brownie, Blood Bond. You can go with Druids. You can go with Dragons. There's a variety of builds. I'll be building some and showing you guys some of the replays as I go, and those are pretty decent. Because this is the tier list, I also want to touch on items, and the item tier list was not updated with the new items, so I thought I'd talk about it right now. I will only go two or three items on each tier to highlight how good they are. First off, Voice Stone. Voice Stone with plus 10 mana is ridiculously strong, even for the mid game or the late game, because with two humans, you get four mana per second. With 4 humans, 7 mana per second. So Voice Stone alone gives you 4 humans or more in the effect. Of course, this is only for 1 unit, but that 1 unit can be the game changer. If you want to try on Queen of Pain, it's pretty good. Try it on anything that needs mana, Morphling is not bad. Try it on the Bat Rider, it's ridiculous. <laughs> you instantly get the Bat Rider to nape on everyone. <laughs> and everyone gets slowed, turn rate, attack speed, and he also does more damage. So Voice Stone is definitely a high tier item. Followed by that, Kaya is good for the mage, but it's very situational. The 20% is a free mage buff. It's okay if you plan to go into mages, but most of us don't plan into the later game until we get our units, right? So Kaya is like a half-half for me. Headdress is interesting. The plus 20 health can be effective if you have it on a unit that's right behind the front line and give the front line unit some health. So Give the frontline unit armor or give them a hood of defiance to make them tankier and then have the unit right behind them, say a Joranger with the headdress, it can work in the early game, a little weaker in the late game. Mobbing Mask is great for demons in the early game, it falls off in the late game of course. Hey there OJ, how's the new patch? Not bad, I like the new patch, it's pretty decent. Tier 2 is when it gets interesting, because right at the start you can find some great tier 2 items. And if you want to build like a snowball kind of team, so give your tank front lines the storm cloak if they have potential to kill. For example, clockwork, timbers, or, or sometimes tiny can get lots of kills because their spells do a decent amount of damage. If you give it to Pudge, he probably won't get any kills, so keep that in mind. Someone like Beastmaster, like Juggernaut can really benefit here because they're frontline, they need their health, also they're brownie, so they get more health. For the range unit, one thing that comes into mind oh, for the damage dealers, for the permanent damage of 3 damage per kill, is Sniper and Bloodseeker. I tend to give it to Sniper with the Bloodseeker for the dead eye, and just pick off the kills. It's like pew pew pew, and all of a sudden your Sniper hits 200 or you know, 100 higher, because he gets so many kills. Other units you really want to think of is the units you'll keep to the late game because the Stormhawk Pike and also the Cloak will disappear with stats if you give to a different unit. So you have to keep it on the same unit. So usually I give to Sniper, usually I give to maybe a Savage or like a unit I want to keep, and into the late game. Crystal is, is very good, because the 20% chance to crit is like a scaling item that goes further. The stronger your unit is, from 1 star to 2 star into 3 star, the better it is. Also, it's great for Savages, great for Legion Commander, it's decent. Hand of Midas is like an upgraded version of a Purging Knife, because it has attack speed and gets gold. It's also decent for the sense, if you get lucky enough, you get lots of economy. I've gotten two or three Midas before, and funny enough, it's, it's pretty strong. <laughs> it's definitely decent. Lastly, the Vanguard, a very, very good item, because now, although the health gain is reduced, the block 70 damage is ridiculously strong for the tanks to have. If you have a warrior, or if you have a druid like a trim protector with this item, they almost never die if they don't get burst down. And unless enemy have savages or massive mage damage, the block 70 is ridiculously good. So definitely check out this item if you want a good frontline. Next up, tier 3. Uceptor. Similar to Voice Stone with 5 mana game, but defensively or offensively with invulnerability. 
what I do is I tend to draw mages with small flame to give it to him because sometimes people attack him. They got sci they got they got cyclone and he just survived for longer. Small flame has shorter cooldown and make use of the mana. I also give it to the keeper, give it to the lich. So it's more mage oriented, but if you have something like you know bristleback or someone who needs mana or maybe bad rider, it can work. So this is definitely an above average item. Followed by that, the top tier tier three item for me it has to be the Venomous offering. The plus ten damage and ten life steal is okay. The five mana is really good. It's basically two cell radius, so it gives your entire team pretty much a channel each, and also life steal and attack damage. It's like a small assault curse, but in a wider range. So always give to a unit that's kind of in the center of the team. It can extend into the range units. Out the range unit behind it, it can extend into the front lines in front as they step one further. It's a really, really top tier S, S tier item for me. Silver Edge. I had some ideas about Shift Silver Edge. What is great is about the attack speed and also the break. You can try to run a Medusa, but it's kind of like game. Personally, if I get a choice to pick, I'll pick Vedemis over, over Silver Edge and sometimes Mask or the Maelstrom over it because the break only works with passive then. It also breaks items so, though, which is a highlight. If it doesn't break item, it's kind of useless because it breaks items. It can break those kind of passive items, you know, the cloak, it can break Vanguard, it can break a few things. Because of that, it's still effective, but make sure it's on a unit that can hit multiple units that have a chance to keep attacking because it has a five second cooldown. Tier 4 items. There isn't that much to highlight because each of them are situational. I don't recommend healing world if unless you're really stuck in healings with the tier item of the headdress and then go with healing world. That can be fine with healers. So something to highlight is battlefield is decent in almost any situation except the mages. If you're a mage, refresher is really good, but the downside is it doesn't give lower cooldown to everyone around you because that was broken. <laughs> that was ridiculous. Two things to know is Iron Disc. It says your health, you become invulnerable for two seconds, but you also become disarmed. So it allows you to cast spells, but you cannot attack during those two seconds. Keep that in mind. So don't give it to a Slark or anyone you want to do damage like a Spin, because they'll be useless for two seconds. And that's not what you want. It's like debuffing yourself when it goes below 50%. It's great on uh, you know, like keep up the Light, on the Lich, or someone that wants to cast spells. It's amazing on Enigma, thank you, Magic. Yeah, that's a pretty good idea. BKB now gives 45 more attack damage. Keep that in mind. Also, 10 seconds for, for the invulnerability. And so this works is when the first enemy gets 100 mana, you will have 100% mana. You will have the defensive capacity for 10 seconds. Because the damage is increased, also 5 more seconds of the immunity, it's really a top pick for most of the comps, even for the mages. Give it to a keeper, give it to someone that wants to be defensive, you guarantee a cast or maybe two cast. They can now have a CD. So instead of before they can have, you know, the permanent one shot, now they can cast multiple times. With Arc Warden though, you can't really abuse it. And what you can do is you can give it to a tank unit or give it to a brownie that wants to stack cube kills. You want to give it to something. Now that the HP is actually slightly nerfed, it's better for the Dagon because the damage is the same, but people have less HP and also it has a cooldown. It can be effective. I think this is above average too. Everything else is situational. Diffuser Blade, if you give it to Medusa, oof, oh boy, no one gets mana. And you know, those items are very good. Lastly, I have not been able to test most of the new items in tier 5 because most of my f people I fight with or the people I kind of game with, they don't live that long. I don't live that long for tier 5 items. But to highlight a few things, Ages of Immortal, it sounds great on paper, but if you have a really good unit that wants to fight, you don't need them to come back with 50% health five seconds later. It's like, I can give my unit a Mooshad, I can give it a butterf Butterfly, it doesn't die, it does more damage. Why do I need to die and come back five seconds later? So it might be a little baitish, but if it's a major or caster unit, it may be okay. It doesn't say give you a full CD though. So you might still be on Kunan and you might not have the mana. 
Topic Cup will always be a block phone, and Topic Cup, well, <laughs> Assault Curse is gone. Half of this unit that you summon is pretty much a tier 2.5 or 2.5 star. It's not a 3 star unit, but it's stronger than a 2 star unit. And if that's the case, this is a great item if you do not have enough damage. If you have enough damage, then, you know, any of the other kind of aura kind of item might help. But this item will also allow you to summon an additional unit, which can be great in most situations, unless you know, some strange interaction like a slack or something that steals off attack that makes use of that. But I think this is definitely above average. It's situational for all situations. Shiver's Guard, well, not much welcomed by people because the damage don't kill the don't kill the enemy and gives everyone free mana. It's great against spinner units, it's great against physical attack teams, or great against assassins, because they need the fast burst. So this is situational and I think it's okay, it's average. Two things we want to look at is Tombstone. Don't with Tombstone is it has one cell radius. Make it two cell, it's a great item. <laughs> one cell radius is not enough. <laughs> so tier five items, oof. Not sure why they do that. Make it two cell, it's definitely t definitely worth the tier five, I think. The zombie does hit harder though, so <laughs> keep that in mind. The Fetcher of the Tyrant. That item was too powerful, I believe, and they quickly nerfed it. Because before, if the unit don't die in the middle, no one dies. <laughs> it's like, rise my army of the dead. And now it's four seconds. So everyone gets the helm effect. If you think about it, if you time your position properly, or if you get a super strong three star like uh, Patch or Axe, it can be great. Still, it's more situational. It only can protect the front line or the middle part of the mid line. But I think it, this may be great on the mages to guarantee another cast. Only having four seconds is not long enough though. So, still. On and off, and I can't say I have the best feeling about tier five, but I really like the tier one to tier four units of four items. So, just a little bit before we go off with today's guide. It's that I love the direction the developers are taking, making the game shorter. Although, keep fighting the PvP runs is a little exhausting because you don't get a break with neutral, the games are much shorter. Also, they're listening to the players and the, the community of taking underlords into round 10, which is really nice. I think the next step to look at, and something big if you guys want to share with me as well, so it's to make the items more dynamic. Right now, the items are good, but they're not great. They're okay because they're new, but once we figure them out, the ones that highlight or the good ones will always stay with us. The other ones will be, oh gosh, I don't need that. There's no good feelings about the item that you don't need. So if we can combine a, Karim, a Claymore with a Crystalis into a Bazooka, if we combine Glass of Haste with Desolators with something like maybe Sundering Archer, something we can do with items that combines and make them continuously useful, that'd be great because there's only one slot on the unit and we cannot, you know, we cannot get multiple items on it. And if that's limited, the options of items are very limited. Next next step is if we make the items combinable or allow for more items on the unit, that'd be really good. So that's just my little insight as we go through today's tier list of items and allies. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below and, you know, join us live on Twitch to share your thoughts or maybe join us on Discord as well to share your thoughts. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and hopefully you enjoyed today's guide. Thank you, thank you.